as we read through the first epistle of John, we discover that there are a group of people spreading false teaching throughout the early church in Ephesus. They're known as the Gnostics, people who wanted to acquire knowledge. And it's these Gnostic lies that John writes about in this first epistle. But what did these people believe? If we can understand what the Gnostics believed, it's gonna help us really uh, get to grips with what John is saying in his epistle. So here's some of the basic things the Gnostics believed. They believed in one supreme God. But this supreme God they believed in, he had lots of little gods that he'd also created, lots of angelic beings. So here, there he is, number one, he's the supreme God, and he made like, second tier gods. Now, the Gnostics said that one of these second tier gods rebelled against the supreme God, and they called him the Demiurge in Greek. That means the craftsman or the creator. And this God who went rogue, he is the one who created the physical realm in which we live. He created the universe, the planets, the moon, the stars, the sun, and all the people. Now, after he'd created the land and the sea and, and, and all that stuff, some other secondary gods, they persuaded him to make a creature called man. And they persuaded him to make a creature called man so that these spirits could come and live in man. And they said that was what Adam was. Adam had a God living inside him. And therefore, the Gnostics said, look, that the gods you read about in the Bible and human beings and all physical things that we find in the universe, they are inherently bad. All these things are bad. God is bad. Human beings are bad. The earth, physical stuff is bad. And actually, if you think about what they were really saying, they were saying that the Lord Yahweh, the creator God that we read about in the Old Testament, that he was bad. He was a rebel against a, a superior God. This is why John starts his epistle, 1 John 1 verse 5, with this is the message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. John wants his readers to know God is not bad. God is not evil. He's not rebellious. He's perfect. He's holy. There's no darkness in him whatsoever. Not only uh, think about their ideology, not only were they saying that God is bad, they were basically saying God and men are equal spiritually. If men have got this uh, spiritual secondary God living inside us, well, then we're just like the God who created everything. We are equals. Totally false uh, and, and wicked things to say. So if you ask the Gnostics, what, what did the Supreme God, what's he going to do about this rogue God who's created things? Well, here's what they said. Look, the Supreme God throughout history, he sent people to oppose the agents of the wicked God, the Demiurge. And you might have heard of some of these people. In fact, they said they turned the Bible on its head. They said wicked people like Cain, they were actually good. They came to defeat the people associated with Yahweh, associated with the creator God. So, of course, the Bible says that killing is bad. And we think that when Abel died, it, uh, when Abel died, it was a bad thing. But they said, no, Cain was doing the supreme God's work. He had knowledge and therefore he had to destroy the enemies of the supreme God. And other Old Testament characters like Korah, who opposed Moses and Esau, who God overlooked and chose Jacob and the men of Sodom, who were wicked men. The Gnostics said, no, these guys were actually good. They were working for the supreme God and fighting against the creator God. They said that the baddies we read about in the Old Testament were actually goodies. Again, a sinister teaching. And they said, the reason they said these baddies were good is because they had a secret knowledge about the supreme God. They'd learned about the truth as they saw it. So what about this man, Jesus, then? Was he special? Was he God's son? Well, yes, the Gnostics would say he was a, an agent of God. He was God's son, God's representative. But again, he wasn't Yahweh's son, they said. He wasn't uh, the son of the God we read about in the Bible. He wasn't the creator God's son. No, he was uh, the son of this other God, this supreme God. And therefore, he wasn't made from craftsman stuff. He wasn't physical. He wasn't real. In fact, Jesus just had a very good imitation body, was their argument. 
And what about the apostles? Well, the apostles, they said, got Jesus wrong. They didn't really understand what he was talking about. They didn't understand that he was representing the supreme God and not the creator God of the Bible. And actually, a later sect, they even said that Judas was an agent of the supreme God and that he had a secret mission to, to kill and betray Jesus so that knowledge could, could escape and whatnot. Complete evil teaching. Well, how did the Gnostics treat each other? How did all of this uh, ideology affect their everyday life? Well, look, they saw themselves as opposed to the people of the Creator God, opposed to Yahweh, opposed to Christians. And therefore, they felt thought nothing of being really cruel and nasty to real Christians. They called them agents of the craftsmen, agents of the evil Creator Gods. They saw them as idiots and foolish and simpletons, animal people. And there was even a thing of, look, these people are, are, are wicked. They should be destroyed like Cain destroyed Abel. Cain was a goodie, not a baddie. And therefore, Christians, there's nothing wrong with treating them badly. There's nothing wrong with hating them and using them. The Gnostics hated the apostles. They hated Jesus' friends and they hated their teaching. And they hated the apostles' followers, the real Christians in Ephesus and the first century. And actually, they, these people made no attempt to live good, holy lives. They abused themselves and each other because, after all, physical stuff just isn't good. And we're going to be released from our body when they die, they said. Therefore, you can do whatever you want. That was the false teaching that John faced in the first century. <laughs> 